One of the first things I did was I decided I actually wanted to live. In my early 20s, for the first time ever, I started to have suicidal thoughts. I started to have pretty severe depression, and honestly, it scared me. Up to that point, I had always used fitness as a way of making me feel better, but somewhere along the way, I had lost complete control over my diet, my habits, my lifestyle, and there I was, 65 pounds overweight, looking in the mirror, hating what I saw, thinking the world might just be better off without me in it. But thankfully, there was a higher and bigger calling. God intervened without a doubt and brought mentors into my life that started to change my thought process. And one of the biggest decisions I made was that I was going to live. That was the kickstart in my journey of losing 65 pounds over the course of about six to eight months. But ultimately, it took about a year to really establish permanent habits that have served me for the better part of the last 15 plus years. Now, one of the first things I'd encourage you to take a look at is life. Life is quick, it moves fast as I like to say. And so we need to make it count. Now, there's this really amazing chart, it's also somewhat scary when you think about it, that shows the average life expectancy of a female. Now, I work with mostly men, but the average female lives to be about 80 years old, the average guy lives to be about 75 years old. This chart shows 80 empty circles. Now, this is my last year in my 30s. I'll be 39 here in about a month at the timing of this video. So in 2025, I'll be turning 40, which if I live as long as the average female means I'm about halfway through my life. Now, 15 years ago, I decided to live, but I will tell you this, 15 years went by in a blink. And the decision we can make today and the decision you can make today is to start actually living. Because here's the thing, fitness, at least my belief, is that fitness is the lowest hanging fruit to improve all parts of your life. Not just the quantity of the years you have here, which hopefully fitness will contribute to a much longer lifespan, but also the quality. Because the only guarantee we have is today. And ultimately, it's not too late to start getting in shape. So the first thing you can do is to start living your life. And understand that there isn't a whole heck of a lot of life to live. You have a limited supply of the years here on this earth. So why not make the most of them? Why not have the highest quality, longest possible life that you can possibly have? There are people counting on you, your kids, your family, your friends. And ultimately, don't you want to live the best life possible while you're here? So the first thing to lose the weight you want to lose that I ultimately decided to do was to start living. Now, the second thing I did was I cut my meals in half. I went from eating six small bodybuilder style meals per day to two really big meals per day along with a smaller snack size meal. Now what this ultimately did was it helped me control my appetite. Naturally, I have a huge appetite. I could probably win some kind of eating competition if there was one for the most calories to pack into one day. I have no problem smashing thousands of calories every day. I just have a naturally higher appetite whether this is from my genetics or from just poor eating habits as a kid, or maybe it was because I was the oldest of six kids and I always felt like there wasn't gonna be enough food. It doesn't really matter where my big appetite comes from. The fact of the matter is I have a big one, so I have to control it, and maybe you do too. Appetite control is one of the biggest lessons in the past 15 years that I've accumulated when it comes to losing a high amount of weight and keeping it off for a very long time. Maintaining an elite level of shape only is gonna happen if you have your appetite under control. So when we eat all these small meals throughout the day, living like a full-time bodybuilder, ultimately we're going to have a much harder time controlling our appetite because our brain is going to start signaling to our body that, hey, at the end of the day, we're hungry at this certain interval, right? If our intervals is every two hours, then we're ultimately gonna start feeling the hunger signal every two hours, which can make it really hard to control your appetite when you're in a calorie deficit which is just burning more calories than you eat in order to lose fat. So we need to learn to control that. And the way I've learned to control it is to have more satisfying meals three times a day, one big meal in the middle of the day, one huge meal at night for dinner, and then one small snack size meal kind of in the middle of my afternoon just to tie me over between lunch and dinner. Now something else I did was I actually moved my workout time from the evening to early mornings. Now what this did was it eliminated the I'm too tired excuse or the I'm too busy excuse, which oftentimes creeps up into our game anytime we try to train in the evening, right? We're run down from all the day-to-day -day activities. We also might have something that pops up in our calendar, so it's so easy to skip a workout if we wait till the end of the day to do it. 
So I started training first thing in the morning, which eliminates that I'm too busy excuse pretty quickly, get up a little earlier, knock it out. And then I've started my day on the right foot, which is a great momentum builder for the rest of the day. Helps me stay on top of my diet, helps me stay more motivated, because I already won the day when I work out first thing in the morning. The fourth thing I did was I stopped treating food like it was my comforting best friend. You know, I used to get stressed out and rely on pizza to lower my stress levels to help me relax. You know, some people smoke weed, some people drink alcohol. For me, it was food. So I had to learn better ways of dealing with my stress levels. Now for me, I just needed to find something I enjoyed. So typically, one of the number one things I do to relieve stress is I either read something or I watch something enjoyable. Now I can combine this with food in a healthy way, but I combine it with a food choice that is gonna help me hit my calories and my protein goal for the day. It might still be pizza, just a healthier version that's made at home. Could be burgers, could be something like a steak and potatoes. Tastes really good, and I get the enjoyment and the stress relief from the book or the TV show or the sports that I wanna watch for you know 30 minutes to an hour while eating something healthy. So I'm still combining nutrition and food with something enjoyable, but now I'm in control of my calories, which is ultimately going to lead to a leaner, healthier, more sustainable physique. Now I know it's not easy to just stop late night snacking or relying on food for stress relief. I used to call my you know, late night snacks my kryptonite, my fitness kryptonite, which was keeping me overweight and out of shape. Now this is gonna probably sound harder than it actually is at first. So now the number one thing I'll ask you is which hard do you want? Do you want the small little hard of having to change habits temporarily you know, that, that little hurdle you have to get over in order to make a permanent change. Initially, it feels much harder. Once you get the ball rolling, things become a lot easier. Or do you want the long-term hard of being overweight and out of shape, losing years on your life and use, losing quality of those years that you have here? This is where my Kryptonite Crusher course comes in. It's a really good starting point if you're just getting the ball rolling when it comes to making a change. You can actually check out the course in the description of this video. It's a good place to start when it comes to making a true transformation. So go check that out. So the next thing I did was actually change my attitude when it came to doing harder things. Hard things, I had to now associate with positive change. So anytime things started to feel hard, I had this word that popped in my head that I got from this guy named Jocko, which was good, right? If things are hard, that's good. That means I'm on the path to permanent change. If things were always easy, then the reward waiting for me probably wouldn't be that great. So when I had these habits that I needed to change and I felt the pull of my old way of doing things, which was, of course was comfort calling me back into the comfort zone, I had to realize that that hard feeling of saying no temporarily was just that, was just my signal that things were moving in the right direction. So we have to embrace the suck in some aspect, but it doesn't have to be hardcore torture. In fact, we'll talk about some really amazing things you can do to still get away with living like a normal person here shortly. But ultimately, one of the major changes I made was this decision that hard was now good. Anytime things got a little difficult, this was a sign that I was moving in the right direction. The next thing I did was I made sure that every single day I had something enjoyable in my diet. Now this thing might change week to week, might even change day to day. But once I found a few things that I could put into my meal rotation, I always included something every day that I look forward to. These days, for example, I have one of these marshmallow dream bars from Starbucks just about every single day. It's only 230 calories. I have it with you know usually some protein, yogurt, uh, or even as a little dessert after dinner. But I always look forward to it. It's nothing crazy. Yes, it's got some sugar. Yes, it's processed. Yes, I know it's not the healthiest thing on earth. But guess what? It's only 230 calories. That's like literally a 10th of my day. I eat like 2,300 calories when I'm trying to lose fat. When I'm trying to gain size or maintain my size, I'm closer to 3,000 calories. So it's less than 10% of my day. So if I'm eating healthy 80% of the time, that leaves room for that 10 to 20% of stuff that will still hit my calories, maybe not be the healthiest option, but will give me the mental enjoyment and satisfaction of knowing I can still be healthy, fit, lean year round, and still enjoy food like a normal person. So my suggestion to you would be find one or two things that you can include in your nutrition plan every day that you actually enjoy, that you look forward to. This will give you that, literally that dangling carrot in front of you to know that, hey, I got something that I'm gonna eat today that I actually wanna eat. 
while still getting in better shape, still maintaining the physique that you ultimately want. The next thing I did was I started investing in a home gym. Now, I didn't start with all this amazing equipment. I started with just a couple pairs of dumbbells. And then over the years, I started to accumulate more and more stuff by investing back into my physical health. Now, I have a pretty sweet gym these days, but it took me years to get here. My suggestion would be start investing in pieces of equipment that you can have in your home so that you avoid the excuse of not having access to things to actually train. Part of this whole permanent change is actually designing your life around your health. You know, it's not as simple as just going to the gym for some people. Some people need more convenience. You know, I work with a lot of guys, busy executives, business owners, busy parents, people who have a crazy schedule who don't always have the time to get to the gym. This is where having some home gym equipment can really help out, which is also what we do inside of my VIP mentorship program for busy executives, entrepreneurs, guys who have a godly lifestyle, who aren't chasing success to flash the Rolex, flash the Lambo, you know, wear all the designer clothes and show off to all their friends. They want the body that they're called to have, right? They just don't feel like the full best version of themselves because they're out of shape. Their confidence is lacking. They feel like a shell of their former self. And honestly, in some cases, they may even feel like a fraud, right? And these are the guys that I work with inside of our program. One of the first things we do is I help guys design a thorough and fully optimized workout program based off the equipment that they have available. A lot of my guys do train in the gym, but a lot of my guys train at home. And some guys do both. So if you're interested in getting a plan that is built for you, your specific schedule, your specific lifestyle, and the goals that you have, and you're a hardworking, humble, family-focused, faith-based guy, check out the link uh, in the description below for my True Transformation Elite Mentorship Program. This is where we'll make a permanent change to how you look, feel, and perform in a way that makes sense for you in the lifestyle that you have. Now, speaking of investing in a program, investing in mentors was one of the smartest decisions I ever made when it came to losing 65 pounds and keeping it off. Now, I know a lot about coaching these days, but one of the things I credit to coaching guys now is the fact that I've invested in quite a lot of coaches over the years. In fact, when I look back in history at what we call the GOATs, right, the greatest of all time in sports, in business, in any arena, one of the common traits is that they invest heavily into their personal development by hiring coaches, mentors, and other top professionals to help them up their game. The reason why they do this, number one, they know they can't do it on their own. If they could, they would have already done it. A guy like Michael Jordan or Tom Brady or you know, Elon Musk, all these guys have invested in people smarter than them in certain areas so they can accumulate and acquire the knowledge from that person much faster and then implement it way faster too. If it wasn't for coaches, I don't know if we'd even have success, right? We'd be all out there on our own, struggling to find the answers, struggling to keep, each, keep ourselves accountable and not fall off the deep end when things get hard. This is where having someone in your corner or even multiple people in your corner makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. I've never met someone super successful that says, oh yeah, I did it all by myself. Most of the time they'll say I had great mentors, great coaches, people in my corner who kept me accountable, kept me on the right path and helped me avoid massive mistakes that would keep me from my goals. And I'm no different. I've invested and continue to invest in coaches even today. For example, right now I'm getting ready to run my second marathon next month and I hired a running coach, not because I don't know how to run or I don't know how to get ready for a marathon at a basic level. Yeah, I can figure that out just by doing my own research. What I really want is someone to build a plan specifically for me, help me understand the things, the nuances that go into running that I may not be able to figure out myself. Someone who has way more experience. My running coach has done quite a lot of marathons. He knows a heck of a lot about it and he's coached a lot of guys for it too. So I'm investing in that knowledge and I know I'll do so much better, not to mention I'm more motivated because I've invested in something. So I'll actually do the work. So one of the biggest tips I can give you is invest in a coach. Could it be me? Sure, maybe. Maybe it's someone else. I don't care. At the end of the day, if you invest in us, we'll take great care of you. If you don't and you go out there and do it with someone else, then you're making the right decision ultimately for you. Because investing in your health signals to your brain that your health is an important part of your life. Make an investment into mentors. I promise you. It will pay off. Something else I did was I ditched the all or nothing mentality. 
you know, it used to be this case where I would be either perfect or I'd be so far off the deep end and I would give up completely on everything. There's no such thing as perfection in this life. Perfect is a myth. If you're aiming for perfection or nothing, you're going to struggle drastically. My suggestion is aim for that 90%, right? Allow for a little bit of room for error. All or nothing is a myth. Don't chase it. You'll end up flat on your face, struggling, wondering how the heck am I ever going to get to my goal? The rule that I live by is never miss twice. If I have a really bad day, I want to make sure the next day is that 90% or better mark. I don't allow two days in a row to go by where I don't get my goals knocked out. The only time I'll leave exception for that is on vacation. On vacation, I'm just like, hey, I'm here to enjoy life. I'll be active. I'll eat as well as I possibly can. I'll get enough protein in, but I'm not trying to be 90%. It's probably closer to 70, 50%. So the all or nothing mentality, get rid of it. It will only keep you from your goals. I started treating sleep like it's a job. Now, not a bad job that I don't want to go to, but a job that I really enjoy. Because see, for a long time, I neglected sleep. I used to think sleep was optional. Sleep was for the weak. Sleep was for the people not willing to work hard. The less sleep, the better. When in fact, the opposite was true. One of the biggest wake-up calls for me was that I realized a lack of sleep not only impacted my mood, you know, I was a much bigger jerk when I didn't sleep well enough, but ultimately it really impacted my appetite and my workout quality. I noticed on the nights where I was getting seven hours of sleep, I was able to control my appetite really easily, and I had really good workouts. Now, the more days where you can control your appetite and have great workouts, the better your physique is going to be. So ultimately, you need to treat sleep with consistency and care. I would have a sleep routine before bed, and I'd even make sure that I'm checking all the boxes with you know, the lighting in the room, the temperature of the room, a good mattress, sleeping on a pillow that's comfortable, that's built for you, sleeping on comfortable sheets, take care of all those things. Because look, when you really think about it, if you're getting eight hours of sleep a night, or at least you're in bed for eight hours, that's a third of your life. 33% of your life is going to be around sleep. I'd say that's a pretty important part of your life and your day-to-day. -day. So make sure you're treating sleep like one of the most important jobs that you have. I started treating my body like a science experiment. I started logging everything, tracking data and monitoring things like my calories, my protein, my steps, my sleep, the weight I was lifting in the gym. I started really getting serious about collecting all the numbers that were impacting my physique. Now, this might feel or sound like a lot of work, and I won't lie, initially it was. But it was short-lived because ultimately, once I got past the first week of tracking, it became second nature. It no longer felt hard. In fact, it gave me peace of mind. Peace of mind that I was hitting the right targets to get hit to the goals that I wanted to get to. Ultimately, if you're just flying by the seat of your pants and you're playing the guessing game, then ultimately you're playing with luck, right? And I don't like to rely on luck. Not when it comes to my health, not when it comes to my physique. I want to make sure the numbers that I need to hit are being hit. So I track things. Now, these days, I've gotten so used to looking at food and knowing how many calories, how much protein, how many carbs and fats are in certain foods that I don't really need to track. I know exactly what is in certain foods because I've done it for so long. But there are still some periods of time where I'll start tracking my steps. I'll just make sure I'm lifting the right amount of weight or I'm getting a little bit stronger. And then, yeah, sometimes I will track calories just for a couple days just to keep myself sharp because I know at the end of the day, I'm going to sleep better at night knowing that all of my targets and metrics are being hit to hit my goals. I found my why. Now, you can probably see these pictures of my family here, but number one reason why I think fitness is important, to me at least, is because I wanna feel like my best. But why? Like, why do I wanna feel like my best? Well, I want my wife to have the best version of me. I want my two boys to have the best version of me. I hope one day my boys see this video and they know the importance that they served in this transformation process. You know, I started this whole thing when I was a single guy, but ultimately fitness is a never ending journey. It's not a race. It's not a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's literally the way we decide to live our life. For me, it's honoring the man upstairs. You know, I'm a big faith based guy. I think that faith plays a huge role in everything that we do, or at least it should. If God is not the center of my life, then what is right? What's worthy enough of being the center of my universe? Yes, I get in shape for them, but I do it because I want to honor this amazing life that I've been given. I'm so grateful for it. Now, yes, do I have my bad days? Of course, I have a lot of bad days. I wake up in a terrible mood some days. Sometimes I'm a jerk, 
Sometimes I'm a downright a-hole, to be completely honest with you. And yeah, I'm sure the people in my life would say the same thing, that yeah, he's a great dude sometimes and also hard to be around sometimes. And I know, though, that when I'm in shape, when I'm healthy, when I'm fit, when I feel my best, I'm much more likely to be a godly man. I'm much more likely to do the right things, treat my employees with respect, treat my family with respect, be a a man of gratitude, someone who is empathetic to the people who need my help. That's not going to happen if I'm out of shape and I'm overweight and I'm miserable with who I am. You know, the people on the internet who write hateful things, who are you know always trolling, always trying to bring you down, it's not because they're happy people. It's not because they're healthy and in shape. It's because they're not. It's because they're struggling. And so I don't want to be one of those people. I want to be someone who brings light into a dark world. I want to be someone who's a leader. And I'm sure you're the same exact way. The reason I know this is because I work with so many people just like you who are put here to do big things, but they feel like their health and fitness is holding them back. They're not the ultimate version of themselves. They're not the best version of themselves. They've let their standards slip. And the good news is it's not too late to fix that. I do believe that fitness has the power to improve all parts of your life. I also think it has the power, if you're not taking care of your health and fitness, to really destroy a lot of parts of your life, to really bring down the quality in all parts of life if you're not handling your health and fitness. So this is why we have my VIP mentorship program as well as the Kryptonite Crusher course. One of those two options is probably a really good place to start for you today. You can check them both out in the description of this video and pick whichever option is best fit for you to get started on what we call this true transformation journey right now. The next thing I did was I stopped waiting for motivation to show up. I started to actually embrace what I call the motivation formula. And it looks something like this. Number one, you take an action. You have to take some sort of action to kickstart the process to get motivated. Taking action leads to a result. Now, typically the result could be something like you feel better, it's enjoyable, it's not as bad as it like you it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be, but an action leads to a result. Now, that result gives you self-belief. You actually believe that you can do something. Oftentimes, a lack of motivation is just a lack of self-belief. Like we don't think we can do it, so we're not motivated to do it. It feels too hard, too big of a task. For example, an hour workout, right? You're like, oh man, I don't think I can go to the gym for an hour. I'm just not energized. I feel too tired. I'm too run down. Just not motivated. So instead, why not try a five-minute workout? Why not try a 10-minute workout? Or just get to the gym. (laughs) Just put your shoes on get in the car and drive to the gym. Heck, just put your shoes on, right? That little action gives you a result of like, oh, okay, I can do this. You know, you get in the car, you drive to the gym, you walk on the treadmill for 10 minutes and you're like, all right, I'm here. I I can do this. I can actually get something done. That's the result we're looking for. And then the self-belief comes right after that, which in then turn leads to motivation. And motivation is simply a belief that you can do something and desire to achieve an end result. And so that's something I started doing, which prevented me from getting in my own way of thinking, you know, I'm just not motivated, so I'm not going to do it. I'll just wait for motivation to knock on my door. And of course, it never does. Motivation only shows up when we don't need it randomly. And then it can be created, though, by this motivation formula. So start using that today. That wraps up today's video on the 13 things I did to lose 65 pounds over 12 months and keep it off even to this day, 15 years later. Now, if you're sitting there going, man, I need to make a change. Well, your next stop is the description of this video. Check out the links there that will guide you into some other resources that I have to get you started on what we call this true transformation journey. I've helped over 7,500 hardworking, humble guys who put God and family first, who want to ultimately look good with their shirt off, make a permanent change to their health and fitness, and do it in a way that keeps their standards super high without having to sacrifice work, family, and all the things that they put a lot of time into. So if that sounds like you, Check out the description below and there will be some resources for you to check out next. In the meantime, thanks for watching today's video. Hope this one helped. Let me know in the comments if it did and I'll see you on the next one. Remember, life moves fast, make it count. Talk to you soon.